Yeah, and everyone, everyone had a shop. If their own family didn't have a shop, then the close relative or their neighbors or cousin had a shop. Yeah. There, there was always a shop <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> of course, close and ev you. everybody knew someone who, was, who had a shop. Everybody knew someone who, was, who had a shop. The gentleman who just spoke is Petteri Virtanen. He is the president of the Saab Club of Finland, which is the biggest Saab owners club not only in Finland, but in the world. But how can that be? Saab is not from Finland, is it? Well, let us explain. Every country in the world has their stupid neighbors. USA makes fun of Canada and Mexico. Germany and France get along like ketchup and ice cream. Then there's Finland. Let's be realistic. We're not gonna pick on our eastern neighbors, so that leaves us with Sweden. Whether it's the economy, politics or ice hockey, there is, and always will be, a bit of a rivalry going on. One of the many aspects where Sweden has had a stranglehold on their beloved neighbors, the Finns, is car brands. Saabs, Volvos, Finland has never had its own distinctive car brand. Occasionally we've tried to make something of our own, but it has never quite worked or gone past the concept form. But this doesn't mean that we haven't made cars. Starting from the late 60s, a variety of cars from Ladas and Talbots to Mercedes GLCs and even Porsche Boxsters have rolled out from the production line of our Uusi Kaupunki factory. But for most of its life, the factory has been the birthplace of the unlikeliest of cross-Scandinavian business ventures. A Finnish made Saab. You would think that no one bought these cars because of our unique relationship with our western neighbors, but you're wrong. We bought hundreds of thousands of these, and we tend to think that it's a very Finnish car. When me and Jerry were growing up in Finland, these things were absolutely everywhere. And they all had this sticker with Finnish flag and Saab Suomesta, Saab from Finland written on them. It was the Finnish car. It was the Finnish car. But why? We wouldn't have adopted Matt Sundin for our national hockey team, or, for heaven's sake, try to lie that ABBA was a Finnish group. But why on earth did we adopt Saab so well? Well, I, I guess you can't point out any single reason behind that. The Valmet plant, we had, didn't have anything even close to that before. So it wasn't merely an, an assembly shop, but the, the car bodies were welded together and, and painted here. Uh, and the factory also had a lot to say about like uh, production methods and uh, and uh, tooling and so on and, and also many parts were sourced locally instead of shipping them from from Swedish suppliers so another factor behind the success was was of course that Saab was so suitable for for the harsh Finnish climate and uh, and for the varying road conditions a third reason which we shouldn't underestimate I think was the the price tag the 96 in in particular it was it became extremely popular in the in the 70s because it was a relatively cheap but but still a robust family car and it actually topped the the new car sales statistics for for many years towards the end of the 70s there was a lot of pride involved you know we, we had a car factory it was a good great thing <laughs> Traditionally speaking, as Finns, we like plain and simple things. A case in point here. But back when this car was new, it didn't look plain or simple. It looked, in fact, a bit strange. And it wasn't without its quirks either. Again, at a quick glance, it might seem like an ordinary car. And it wasn't until you tried to impress your girlfriend in a passenger seat by executing a sharp handbrake turn that you find out that the handbrake is actually connected to the front wheels and you would crash in a tree. And that's just the start of the list of quirks that would make Doug de Muro soil his pants. So you're, you're never crashed into a tree because of <laughs> being surprised by the handbrake? No, not me personally, <laughs> but I, I know a couple of friends who were a bit surprised about the, the fact. <laughs> but you have to remember that uh, many, if, if not most, of these uh, things we like to call quirks are, are actually safety features. Location of the ignition switch 
which basically oh, yeah. sits on the on the floor between the front seats. And uh, this one's also all about safety. In Sweden, the the state authorities had collected information on road accidents already in the in the 50s and uh, and and the 60s. And the Saab themselves also had some some investigation into the into the accidents. And and they had noticed that even in uh, quite minor collisions the driver would uh, injure his or, or her knee when it hit the ignition key. Saab figured that uh, let's put the key on the floor so that no one needs to crash into it. So you have the key on the floor but you still need it to, to implement uh, theft protection. You, you can't build a, a traditional steering column lock. Yeah, you lock the gear stick instead. Of course this, this uh, feature brought uh, a whole lot of joy when you borrowed your subs to someone who didn't know about it. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe they still could start the car, but but the real trouble usually started when they parked the car and, and they couldn't detach the key. And and then it was quite impossible to figure out what to do. I mean, you, you had to engage reverse and then turn the key all the way to the lock position to, to get out the key. Yeah, in a time before iPhones and Google and calling your uh, friends. I exactly, guess. yeah. So what do you do in that situation? Do you just leave the car with the, with the key in the lock and, and, and walk somewhere to get help? Or <laughs> Luckily, everyone had subs those days, so <laughs> help wasn't <laughs> that far away. Yeah, that's true. But as impressive as the list of these quirks or safety features is, the defining feature of the Saab 90 is the unique driving experience. I could just ride shotgun for hours in this car. I feel cocooned with warmth and plushness. Yeah, it's amazing. It took me 10 minutes to realize we don't even have a radio, so I guess we can focus on singing Swedish folk songs or something. Yeah, who needs a radio when you can sing Sommar and Ekort? Hösten kommer snart. Den glider in. So compared to your Toyotas or Opals from the similar time period, Saab seems like the more silent, comfortable and plush way of getting around. And before the age of SUVs and four-wheel drives, it was also the go-to winter transportation device. You had front wheel drive and, and a lot of weight on the front wheels. So, so that basically meant that you could go to places uh, a real wheel driven car would, wouldn't take you. This particular model, the Saab 90, was particularly Finnish. It was a mishmash of other more popular Saab models and only 25,000 of these were made in total. You either got a four-speed with, um, well, an engine, a gearbox and some seats, or the more luxurious five-speed we have here that had a front lip spoiler and some intermediate windscreen wipers. Mm. Despite the Saab 90's simplicity, it was actually quite a labor-intensive car to manufacture compared to other more popular models like the Saab 900. And it wasn't the only thing that plagued Saab at the newborn time of lean manufacturing and high efficiency and the low-cost mentality. Yeah, um, General Motors announced in, in December 1989 that they would uh, buy 50% of, of Saab Automobile and uh, in, 2000, in 2000 it bought uh, the remainder. If we start with the good things, I, I believe the, the GM ownership brought some, some well-needed efficiency to the development and manufacturing of, of Saabs. But of course, not, not all Saab drivers were so happy about this and, and many said that Saab lost a lot of its individual character and uh, GM was maybe getting a bit desperate when they couldn't find something to, to buy. Saab was not something they were deliberately looking for. They rather ended up buying Saab. It took quite long for them to figure out what Saab really was about. And from then on, we all know the story. Saab struggled and fell into different ownerships none of which seemed to be able to kickstart the company and revive it to its former glory. And we Finns, we stopped buying them and started buying Nissan Qashqai's instead. And now driving this feels like such a shame. Yeah, I know what you mean. I wouldn't like to imagine 20 years from now going to a Christmas party with the Nissan Qashqai's owners club. So in Finland we have a saying that goes Saab is me on sairaus, which translates to Saabism is a disease. What do you think we mean by that? 
<laughs> well, that must be one of the oldest jokes still around. <laughs> yeah. When the fast Saab turbo cars were hitting the roads, people kind of blamed the Saab drivers for, for having a fixation to overtake everything and, and everywhere. Well, the saying has continued to, to live. I hope it doesn't have that negative connotation anymore. So, so nowadays it's more like a way of stating that uh, someone dares to be a bit different by, by driving a Saab. So even if Saabism is a disease, it's a quite nice disease to have. It's quite hard to imagine the Mercedes A-Class or the GLC, both of which are produced in the same factory as these Saabs were, to have such an effect on our nation and its people. Would you buy your A-Class as now just because it's built in the Uusikaupunki factory? In short, yes. I, I currently have one of the last 9.3 models. I, I bought it in uh, 2011 and I've decided to quit using it as a daily driver when it turns 10. There's still a couple of years and uh, something may happen. But um, if that something never happens, then then, then I believe a, a Mercedes from the, the Uusikaupunki plant would actually make for an excellent option because, um, well, it's it's still a Finnish car, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, of course. But, but has it quite captured the Finnish legacy that Saab once had? No, I don't think it has. Uh, it's never going to get um, anything in, in those dimensions. But maybe it should. Maybe we should feel a little bit proud. If there's one thing we could learn as a nation from the Saab 90, maybe it's the national pride that it gave to us. Maybe that is something that Finns could learn from this strange, Swedish-designed, Finnish-made, quirky little car. Petteri Virtanen, president of Saab Club, thank you very much for having this discussion. Well, thank you, and, and thanks for having me. It's always a, always a pleasure to talk about Saab. Happy Independence Day from us in uh, the Saab Club of Finland. Happy Independence Day, everyone, and congratulations to our 101-year-old country. Hyvää itsenäisyyspäivää kaikille ja onnittelut 101-vuotiaalle Suomelle.